Where have you been? I've been doing good, pretty good. You know, I mean, uh, busy uh, under the circumstances. I mean, I'm always busy, but I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a, a lot busier, yeah. right? So uh, just uh, trying to uh, cope with everything that I can do in my capacity uh, to make sure that I uh, serve my constituents as best as I can. Yeah, that's that's so good. And I, I got your email too. So great work. I got the email um, every time you send it, and I really yeah. appreciate you taking time to even update us on what you're doing and and the city policies. And um, it's good talking to you. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while, Chris. Because yes. we, we either just see. I just I I see uh, your Instagram post. A big fan of yours. Yeah. Uh, I know I've seen you uh, the odd time, but uh, <clears throat> you know. This is the, you know, right now, this is the common way to meet right now, obviously because of the situation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, thank God for technology that we can continue to engage. Yes, yes. Um, yes. But, uh, and I'm glad that you re do receive my newsletters because it's my it's my way of, you know, my it's my way of outreach and communicating to people, you know, what's going on in the community, what I've done. And uh, I always I always try to keep my myself uh, available or accessible to anyone that wants to talk, you know, get a hold of me. Uh, you know, because uh, uh, in order for me to do my job properly, it's I need I need feedback from the people, right? That's it. And 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 it's so good the, the way you do it. One one of the most inspiring thing about you to me is the fact that you're not just there in your office doing the um, the key work. You're also reaching out to members of the community, um, celebrating with the event, posting it, sharing them, and and getting to see that every day. You get um, it's inspiring and it's fun. Apart from the tedious work you're doing, um, I understood that yeah, you people were in the um, we are voting to about 4 a.m. a couple of days ago. That that was that was a different case. That was so uh, when I saw the the um, the post from I think it was um, James. I don't know if you posted you posted it to yourself on your IG that we are voting to 4 um, when uh, in the legislature to 4 a.m. But I was like. That is incredible. With the, you have your family, you have every other thing, but you still dedicated so much time and energy to make sure that the community is, is served, the community is fully represented, and also taking care of the well-being of the city, so the province and the city. So that's so so much um, inspiring to me to see. So thank you so much for the great work you do uh, on a daily basis, John. Oh, you're welcome. I mean. Um... You know, there's there's a lot of people that don't realize all the behind the scenes stuff that we as elected official, regardless if you're <clears throat> if you're with the city, the province like myself or federally, uh, there is a, a lot of work, a lot of commi personal commitment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm just thankful that I have a very understanding family, my wife and my two kids who allow me to serve the community as best as I can. Yeah. That's good. Thanks. Thank you for that, for um, everything you do. <clears throat> Yeah, and also thank you for taking out the time to to meet with me. I know I reached out to you last week, and um, it was it was so so fast the way the, the whole process uh, went, and you you made that time to schedule this meeting with me. So thank you so much for the opportunity, John. You're welcome. And um, going into the um, the the main the agenda is that I'm starting this program called One Minute Inspiration with Chris Love. That's myself, and the goal is to. Um, establish rapport with community leaders and representatives in order to build a strong network for a united um, community because you'll be stronger as a community if we are united, if we have a way of um, having a conversation with one another. So that's one thing I'm doing. And also to inspire the younger ones like myself um, and a couple of others that are coming up to see that there is opportunity to, to grow in this in this community too. So that's why I'm, I'm starting this um, program. And, and it's just, um, I'll be asking you four questions basically, and they're, they're not two questions, so. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I'm testing the first question is, who are you just like an introduction of um, who you are? So the first question is, who are you? Okay, so my name is John Reyes, I'm the MLA for Waverly. I'm uh, the former MLA for St. Norbert. I got into politics uh, back in 2016 uh, when I got elected and I got reelected last year in the new uh, constituency of Waverly. Every 10 years there's a boundary change. So they changed the uh, boundaries and I ended up being in, in Waverly. <clears throat> uh, my government title uh, is the special envoy for military affairs. So 
I take care of the military community here in Manitoba. I do have a military background. I served in the military for 10 years. After, the, uh, after my military career, I took my degree in business at Royal Roads University in Victoria in entrepreneurial management, small business, and uh, decided to move back to Winnipeg uh, with my wife, Cynthia, who's a nurse. And um, our daughter was born in Victoria back in 2001. So she's 19 now going to university, <laughs> Canadian Mena University, and she's taking business as well. And uh, my son is 14, and I have a dog named Seeger who's 10 yeah. years old as well. Yeah, as you, you probably see his pictures on my Instagram, Chris. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, um, I've been in politics since 2016, and I'm uh, I'm enjoying it, uh, serving uh, the constituents as best as I can, uh, in good times and in bad, just like a marriage, right? In good times and in bad. And you know, and I have a lot of faith as well because uh, you know you can't do this uh, without. Uh, you know, having some some uh, spiritual guidance as well. One thing I do miss is going to church. Uh, you know, uh, I attend virtually. Obviously, it's not the same, but uh, hopefully, to the grace of God, um, you know, God willing, that I will overcome. Yes, Amen. Thank you, thank you so much for sharing that. And and talking about the military, but I kind of connect a little bit because um, one of my other brothers, it was in the it was in the Air Force. Okay. So I live, I went to the, I went to my senior high school in Air Force Bay. So I live, I live with him in the, in the Air Force Bar Park in Nigeria for a while before it transitioned into um, the Nigerian Navy. So um, I really love when I wanted, I wanted to be, um, I wanted to be in the Air Force too when I was growing up because seeing the way um, they present themselves super clean and also their respect and, and all that, I really love, um, um, people in the in the uniform. Anytime I see them, that always remind me of um, of my brother and also my experience back in in Lagos when when I was living there. So I really appreciate that. So if you notice the hand forces there, I, I couldn't hold back. I have to like was even the day before, and also uh, sharing people the link to also the need to support the 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 veterans and soldiers who are um, sacrificing their lives daily, even for. For the peace and security that we are enjoying so thank you for your service and in the military and thank you for your service even, <laughs> even you're welcome to you right now so and so um the second question which you already touched on is where did you start oh where sorry where did you start your political career you know what um i i've always uh had an interest in politics it's actually when i was a child watching question period, like the federal politics. Yeah. I was never really interested, uh, you know, in provincial politics, maybe a little bit city politics, but it was always um, at the federal level because, you know, I, uh, it was, I guess it was, it was more grand at the time when I was a child watching the debating going on. And um, yeah, so then I fast forward, I guess I would get involved you know, a little bit as a teenager in campaigns. Um, I got involved in federal campaigns, but I, I guess I, uh, what I what I like to say is like you know I've had a couple of mentors uh, growing up going into politics. One of them is Dr. Ray Pactican, uh, who was a former member of Parliament in Winnipeg North, first and only Filipino member of Parliament uh, who's ever achieved uh, becoming a member of Parliament. Mm -hmm. As well, um, I also got involved through being invited to roundtables by the former member of Parliament for Transcona, Lawrence Tote, and also. His assistant, who's now a city councilor, Sean Nason, the city councilor for Transcona. So they would invite me to roundtables because at the time I was a business owner. I, I was president of the Manitoba Filipino Business Council. So they, they, they wanted their input, you know, input on certain things, certain issues. Yeah. So now that I'm in this role, I'm always engaging with different types of stakeholders, whether they're, you know, business owners or nonprofits on you know, getting their feedback on what can we do to improve, you know, improve the system or improve the lives of many Manitobans and making a true difference. So uh, that's, that's how I got involved. So if you want to pinpoint a date when I started, I mean, technically when I was a child, but uh, more involved probably when I was more of a young adult. Wow, that's, that's a good, that's a spread. It means that you are serving even through others, even though you haven't gotten the position that um, you eventually are now you are serving in, in some capacity before you eventually get there. That's that's so good. That's also an important message for us that we need to 
um, learn to serve our communities and represent ourselves even in, in any way we find out in any capacity that is possible, not just um, waiting to get to maybe the electoral um, positions, but also starting from any local opportunity, any uh, opportunity we have in our local church, in our local community to represent in anything, to do our best. Because obviously, if you didn't do very well in those roles, if you didn't participate very well, you probably wouldn't have had this opportunity. So that's, that's really um, important. Thanks for sharing that, um, that with me. So the next um, question would be, what keeps you going uh, um, despite the challenges listening to the news? And I follow Twitter and I see the, the constant um, feedback from um, both colleagues and members of the community, even those that those of us that you are representing, sometimes we tend to overlook everything that you people are doing and then look for the, for the negative. So what, what keeps you going despite the challenges? Well, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a good question, uh, Christian. Um, you know, the main thing is uh, going into this type of career, uh, political career, uh, I, you have to accept criticism, um, you know, good and bad. And that's always gonna happen on a daily basis. Uh, I was in business, that was my background. And you know, you try to make the customer, the client happy, right? In this case, you're not going to make everyone happy with the decisions you're gonna make, right? But hopefully you make the best decisions uh, in your heart and in your mind, obviously, for the best interest of, in, in my case, Manitobans and my constituents. And um, it's, uh, you know, right now it has been, it has been very tough because uh, with COVID-19, there, there is no, there is no template, there is no playbook, there is no silver bullet on how to do this. I personally, you know, um, and, our, and our government, we try to be as proactive as we can be. But, you know, there are, there are things that are also beyond your control. Uh, and in this case, the COVID-19 virus. Um, but, uh, you know what, uh, go, going into this, uh, like I said, um, you know, I, I just do the best that I can. Uh, I, I always like to say, Chris, I'm always on the ground. Uh, I, I value every community. In, in order to represent your community the best you can, you have to be there. You have to go to the event. You have to genuinely get to know them, not just the photos. You have to genuinely get to know them. So in your case, from the, the Nigerian community is growing in, in, in Manitoba. Um, and I'm very, I'm very happy about that. I see all these communities grow. And one thing that brings community together is sports and food. So I, I watch sports <laughs> and I can talk about the Super Eagles or the Super Falcons, <laughs> Super Falcons, the, the women's team. Yeah. But I can talk about the jollof rice and the hot pepper soup. That's right? it. <laughs> and I, and, I, and I, I, love, I love food, I love sports, I love people. And in order to genuinely serve them and to serve the best uh, of your ability is get to know them, really get to know them not just by going to events. And I do, I go to tons of events where I was and, you know, you see them, you say hi to them, but to really get good um, conversation and um, intimate feedback from them, you know, and that's what I did <clears throat> during the summertime. I, I held these meetings with certain groups um, to get to know them better. And uh, you know what, uh, all I can do is uh, serve, do the best that I can. And uh, my family allows me to do that. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And, and the, 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 one of the things I learned from that is going to know the people that you represent, the people you're serving, not just um, on the facial um, mode, but just also getting to know them very okay. What are they, what are the things that these people are interested in? I know, for example, Nigeria, we are, we are very fascinated about sport and um, general price, which is important. So getting to know that also, um, to have that discussion with people to say, okay, what is going on in your community? How can we help? Being there sometimes to listen is, is the most important thing that people actually need um, and you are doing that. So thank you so much for, for sharing that. And um, the, last, the last question um, will be, um, where are you aiming at? What, what is your next goal if you're, if you're able to share that? You know, I, what my next goal is, you know what? Uh, I guess I, I really take it day by day, Christian. I mean, I, I look forward, but I also really look and really appreciate what's going on now. 
uh, in terms of my family. Uh, I certainly, I certainly don't appreciate the situation that we're in now, but it's my, my, my job as an elected official, uh, being in government, to make sure that we communicate the best as we can with the public. Uh, one of the things is that I want people to be aware is that um, there are news outlets out there, right, that report the news, and they have a job to do. Um, but make sure that you are really sure that you get that communication through a credible source so that you get the facts. Because right now, people are going through a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of pain uh, because of the situation we're in now. And it's not just happening in Winnipeg or Manitoba, it's happening across the country and it's happening globally. So all we can do is, is, is just uh, in, in our case, is listen to uh, the doctor's orders, in, in, in this case, Dr. Brent Rusin, stay home, stay safe. And, um, you know, I just take it day by day right now. Um, you know, my parents are in their 70s. And, you know, unfortunately, we've had people who have passed away on my condolences to them. Um, and uh, I just want to make sure that, that, that I enjoy life. So back on the question of what are my goals? Well, you know what, my goals are to, to, to continue to serve the people the best that I can, Chris. And in order to do that is I just have to communicate them, communicate with them, follow up with them the best that I can. Uh, thank you so much, John. And, and and you talk about the um, the news and, and the news outlets and what the information that are spreading around these days. Um, there are lots of um, false, in, um, false information that are being spread around and they spread very fastly. So one of the things I, I'm trying to do for myself is that um, I go to the, if the, if I see a news that, oh, the premier said this, or the, um, the prime minister said this, one of the things I do for myself is that I just go to their um, Twitter page to see, okay, what did they actually say? Because sometimes um, um, the, the media has uh, in some way, which is supposed to be independent and not unbiased, but sometimes I've seen that some of the athletes are, um, are representing some particular ideologies. And so they, they tend to represent, they tend to report things that favor or work in line with the ideology. So it is our responsibility to not just um, listen to the news and follow up everything that they say, but also go to the, uh, like people say, the horse's mouth to hear from what is the, what did the, this person actually say or what did this person actually do, which is something very important um, for me. And I also try to um, tell that to, to my friends, not just seeing what is on social media. Every, anybody can, uh, can screenshot, anybody can um, modify with, with the available technology, can modify anything and it look like well. So it's our responsibility to go there to verify the information for ourselves before sharing it with um, other people. So that's, uh, that's something very important that um, I learned from what you just said. And so taking life one step at a time is, is very important to you. I know um, before the beginning of this year, I, my plan was to do this, do this, do this, do this. And, and now I realize that it's not necessarily what I plan to do, right? It's to take life one step at a time. COVID-19 has taught us a lot that um, it's not about what we plan to do, but it's taking life one step at a time. I'm being grateful for every day that we live as a gift because there are many people that have um, lost their lives, um, uh, uh, sincere condolence to their families and their loved ones. It's not that um, they plan to, um, but life just happened and we have to be grateful for every opportunity that we have to appreciate um, the people that we, we have around us and the things that we're able to assess. So um, that's also a very important um, 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 message to, to me. So thank you so much for, for sharing those. And that's basically it in terms of my question. Um, I really appreciate you, John, for taking that time to um, do this interview with me. Do you have any last, uh, last thought or last comments, feedback, anything? Yeah, you know what uh, I just wanted to, to let people know is, um, you know, if, if, if they ever want to get into a career in politics, uh, the way I did is get yourself involved with, you know, nonprofit groups, um, you know, um, you know, just a wide variety of them so that you can get gain that experience because then you know what, uh, if you truly want to serve, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll want to do uh, what I'm doing. 
but uh, there, there is a lot of um, learning experiences, I'm going to say. And, uh, you know, it, don't be afraid to approach a politician or an elected official who has been there before, who's had that experience, so that you can gain that knowledge. Um, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, you want to do what's best for, for the community, for the greater community. And uh, that's what, uh, what, what I'm trying to do. And that's what every elected official uh, is, is trying to do regardless of their political stripe. So uh, I just wanna thank you for allowing me to share my experience and uh, catching up with you, Chris. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jenny. Talk to you later. <laughs> okay, thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye, yeah.